You're live. Hockey Nation friends, welcome back to the Hockey Nation live show with Coach Frenchy directly from the booth and, of course, directly from the West Coast, Michael DeVellano. Oh, my God. Sending what are we on the gong show now? You, Michael. Sending ovation for you this morning. <laughs> <laughs> here we go thursday november 12 2020 we are um quiet uh, never been before i think in the oh, in like, crazy what's going on around but um you know we have a big meeting today between the nhl pa and of course the nhl um, I have a chance to watching more and uh, follow Elliot uh, Freeman last night. And um, really interesting. He expects between 56 games to 72 games uh, between both of them, uh, between the, the team. Um, no. They learn from the MLB and also from the um, NFL. If they start a season, they have to add a, a gap of two or three weeks for cancellation game or something could happen during the season because COVID could be, uh, you know, be a part of one specific team. Example, missing four or five players and the team cannot play this weekend and they have to move move on the next, you know, change the schedule, everything like that. So uh, to talk about this, the second thing to talk about, uh, maybe a bubble area because what's happening right now? First of all, also, the owners, most of the owners want their fans back in the building. Yeah, but that's, I mean. But the problem <laughs> is, it's not all the state have the right to do that, right? Some other state, you cannot. <laughs> you keep cutting out on your mic for some reason. I do? Yeah, you're back. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I yes. I in a way, but it, it cuts out. Hold on. Let me check something here. All right. Is it better now? You're good. So anyway, so uh, what's happening right now is so uh, many owners want their fans back in the building. Some of them cannot do it because the state um, cannot allow any fans under, you know, you can see in NFL, like Seattle, they have no fans, but you can go here in Florida, we have fans in the building, right? So it uh, would be interesting what happening over there. The second thing he ex explained, uh, you almost right about the um, salary. So they have already, like, it's not a big major problem. They play one game or 56 game or 72 game example. What they do, they take 10% of their salary out. Then they have another 20% of escrow. And so they have like 72% of the salary is going to be paid whenever they play one game to, um, 46, 80 game, whatever it is. And the thirdly, the player want to play. Yeah, they want to play. I mean, they, they, play. they don't want to sit around. They sh they're normally playing this time of year. I mean. Yeah. So they want to go back. They want to have it. They, they also yeah. said, we don't care how many games you play. We're getting that 70%. <laughs> so they, they they want to go back. They they, they want to play. So we yeah. get a thing. They, they try to push for January 1st. Um, so that would be something you have to look about this. So they're still talking yeah. about maybe bubble area, but not like Toronto and Minton, but yeah. something like that. I mean, I think they have to do that, right? Like, I think, you know, the, the thing is, can you put any stands or people in the stands? I think you can. You know, I think that you can spread them out. Yeah. But you, know, you got lockdown Joe here in the States. So now they're going to, he's saying he's going to do a four to six week lockdown as soon as he becomes president. So then what do you do? <laughs> you you move in, the, in Canada. I'm just kidding. But the you, know, are, you, you, you are correct, except that Trudeau is the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, right Maybe. now, Trudeau's on lockdown. BC is on lockdown and they have no numbers. So it's just really confusing, I think, for them to project, what do we do? D does this thing not start till February, March? 
the problem behind that, Michael, is like if you, if you push in March, now you push everything again to another oh, season. I, I get it. So it, it's confusing for everybody right now. I will see. Uh, you know, I, at some point, I don't want to talk more because I'm I'm getting frustrated to talk about it, this. No, it's just it's you know it's games, right? It's politics, and they're trying to figure out the same thing. So I think every regional area is a little different. You have the U.S. Canada effect, like you mentioned. You know, it's we're we're in the same boat in the WHL. I mean, we don't know what's going on, so we're. Yep, I want to give you a list of the free agent right now on the board. And I want you to give us a little bit like what do you get, what you will do with those kind of players uh, if you have a chance to sign them or if you would like to sign them. I'll give you about like we have a we have a still 40 of them, but let's move on with it. You know, you have Mike Hoffman on the board. He's, he's a very consistent point producer. I think he's obviously got to be in a supporting role where you can still play him top six on power play. Um, you don't love him five on five. So you're, you know, you're probably going to sign him for one to two years and maybe give him four to five mil. And I think the place for him, I still think Columbus. I think Columbus has room and they need some help. Um, I mean, Boston really could use some help. And frankly, Calgary could use some help on the wing. I don't know if they have room for him. No room there, but I think the third thing I will mention to you, the third thing I mentioned to you will be Nashville. Yeah, Nashville's an obvious one. Nashville has got gaping holes as we looked at the other day. Like yeah. that that lineup has got room for Granlin, Hoffman, and who else do you got? <laughs> Number two is Anthony Duclair. KHL. Um number three, Carl Sodenberg. Well, you know, that's an interesting player because he can I think he's an effective third line guy that can get you 15, 20 goals. And he can flex up to the second line. He can play a little bit of wing too. So I mean, I think he's gonna get four mil, five mil, maybe you for one what? year. And do you believe do you, and again I could be wrong. Do you really do you really believe? Do you believe he could accept one point five million dollars for one year? I don't know why he would do that. I, I he's can traditionally been a four to five million dollar player. He, he, why? He's thirty six years old. Right? He's a thirty six years old. Is he's, he thirty? He's, he's a COVID situation contract, and what happening right now? They don't have a most of the team. Ninety nine point nine percent of team now have most of player top six in the lineup. Yeah, but you look the guy like had 16, 23, 17. He's a very consistent offensive guy, except for one year where the whole team sucked. And that was in Colorado. And every other year, the guy is very consistent. He's a second line to third line centerman that can also play wing. Like, I, I can't see him. And he's never, he, like, his last contract was what, four, 4.5? Four. I kind of think he's like at least three. I, I even. He sounds low to me. He's not know. a 1.5. Look at Pierre. There's guys that have never scored anything in the NHL, and they're getting 1.5. <laughs> yeah, but the situation is different. That's my point here. I believe a team like like Columbus, Columbus don't have a third center. It, it's not worth it because you think about it. If he's going to get 70%, he's not going to take 70% of 1.5. He's going to take 70% of four. No, never. You're never going to get over two point five million dollars. Yeah, totally will because he's he's probably more reliable than Hoffman. <laughs> nah, he's not. <laughs> no, Hoffman at least will get you twenty five goals. <laughs> no. The final the final one is Derek Brassar. Um, you know, he already took a haircut. He's already at one point two million dollars. Yeah, it's ridiculous. His contract was so cheap for what he brings. Like, he's, again, he's not lost anything. I mean, he's a very good player. I think uh, he's going to get 1.5 max again. Man, I, I find that hard to believe, but maybe. Oh yeah. What was, thought, was his offensive production last? I think you're, I think you're looking at guys that have nothing. Like no, he got caught during the playoff. Scr <laughs> healthy scratch. What he played 18 games in the playoffs. He had eight points in 18 games. Yeah, but he's a healthy scratch. When? Ah, uh, a few games. 
He played 18 games. How many playoff games did they play? 25, 23. Well, because of the expanded schedule. Because normally that would be like three rounds. Well, that's what the the play. But overall, I believe he got healthy scratch. Let's uh, just look. How many games did Barzal play? 22. So he got scratched four games. But look, Barzal had 19 goals and he had 11. <laughs> or 10, sorry. I mean, and then in the playoffs, Barzal had 17 points, which is obviously what you expect. So, like, to see that he's going to get, like, seven or eight or something and then he gets a million, he already took a haircut and a risk on himself. Do you take Fedorbert or Brassard? I prefer Brassard, but Soderberg. Soderberg's a big guy that doesn't play big, but he can do a lot of other stuff. So it's really kind of a tough call. I think Soderberg's going to probably. I don't know. Brassard's got. I think Soderberg. Yeah, that's that's my think thinking. Like Soderberg is more versatile. I don't know. Broussard's really versatile. I just think Soderberg traditionally is healthier. All right. No, I'm I'm offer you three players. Which one you take? Michael Grenlin, Andres Atanasio, and Eric Hola. Ooh. Probably Grenlin. Grenlin is like Hola in any given day is good, but he's got injury problems. Athanasio will break your heart. He's horrible away from the puck. You can't play him at center. You can't play him at wing. Where are you going to play him? <laughs> like, what are you going to do with him? He's like a gaping hole on the on the team. You're playing shorthanded every time he's on five on five. <laughs> he gets thirty goals and lets sixty against. Yeah, I think I think Granlin's a good two way player. He can. I prefer him at center, but he's a little small and he gets overpowered at center. But he's a good skater. He's creative and he can score. All three players, I think they have a bad year last season. See, Granlin to me still got 17 goals, and look at where he sits on that roster. Like he's he's like their third leading goal scorer in Nashville. They walked away from. Him. Like no, how who was their top goal scorer last year? Even even Arvidsson had like 15 goals. Yeah, it, 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 a couple of things. My I don't follow David Puel well right now because he didn't take a lot of decisions where I don't understand, but. Um, I don't, know I, think, I don't understand why he, you know what I mean? I don't like the coaching change. The coaching change to me made no sense. They walked away from a guy that they gave up to get, you know, they gave up Kevin Fiala, who's now the best player in Minnesota. And, you know, so there, there's something weird there where players weren't getting opportunity. You see, Granlin's always been a 50, 60 point player. And now he goes to Nashville and suddenly he's can't get a sniff. They're not that good. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. There maybe there's a plan that we don't know about, but okay. the next one I will say to you is Michael Frolick, Corey Perry, or Brand Boyle. I kind of lean Boyle. Corey Perry, I don't feel is gonna get you points. He's gonna be a pain in the ass. He's gonna be cheap. Boyle's gonna be inexpensive, but he's a monster. He can take face-offs, he can score a little bit. I like Brian Boyle even at his age. To me, that's the guy you go for. Okay. What was the other one? Corey Perry. Corey Perry, Michael Froelich, no. and um, Brad Boyle. I think Froelich's kind of had his best days, which they all have, but I think Boyle is still kind of the player he was like four or five years ago. He's just big, plotting, but he's so big, and he can win face-offs and kill penalties, and he's you're not going to do too much on the ice with him there because he's so big, and he can score too. Yeah, yeah I agree with you with that one. Um Let's go with four right now. Corner, Sherry, Riley, Shehan, Devin, uh, Devin Shore, and Melker Carlson. Ooh. I, you can only pick one. I think you could get any of those guys for 700 grand. <laughs> you so, know what? Sherry was $3 million. Shehan was only 900. Sure, 2.3 and Carlson to yeah, I, those are guys that will take a, a haircut. I, I think Sherry showed last year that you know he's like gonna flex between third and second line. He's not, you know, his numbers were buoyed by Sidney Crosby, but he's still a decent player. You just gotta have the right expectation. He's too small. 
He's fast. He can do stuff, but he's not going to be consistent. Um, Riley Sheehan has no points in him, but he's going to he can he's going to play fourth line and he can anchor the fourth line, and he's just going to be a great two way player. Um, Shore is okay, you know he's similar. And then what was the other one? The I think that's the one I was thinking of. Shore, Shore Sheehan, and Carlson. So Melker Carlson, people don't really know much about him, but he's one of these guys that I don't get what the hell San Jose is doing because he could be there for really inexpensive. He can. He's not going to get you big points, but he's not going to hurt you five on five and he can kill penalties and he's a good energy player. Like to me, that's a guy that can be really useful in a lineup and you probably get him for seven or 800 grand right now. Yep. I agree. Under four, I really like um, Carlson. I kind of do. I, you know, I, if you could only pick one of them, he can't, he's not a centerman though. So I can understand why you might look at Riley Sheehan if that's what you were worried about. And Riley can play wing, but he's not going to get you any points. I mean, yeah. The next four, and that's a little bit uh, uh, one of the two are maybe not the same style of player, but they are like 30 years old and older. Uh, Michael Gratner, Matt Martin, Brett Ritchie is only 27, but I would put him because of the side he played. And then I'm going to add uh, Mikkel Boenger or Boenger. Ger. He played for Ottawa and um Oh Boddicker is junk. Boddicker is like falling off. He's got big contracts and sucked. Like he's been terrible. So I think he's already gone, isn't he? He went to the Swedish league. Why well, you know he's Just still there, play. but I, I think he's he should stay there. there. He's he's not meant for the NHL anymore. He doesn't go to hard areas. He's just overrated. He's just everybody knows he's done, I think, but Nobody's going to spend money on him anymore. <laughs> He's already cut his retirement. What do you do with Richie uh, Martin and grab no, Not Richie. I don't trust Richie at all. Um, he's not a good, great skater. and He's big. Um, I, I think Grabner's got use as a third-line guy that can get you shorthanded goals, and he's, he's the fastest skater in the NHL maybe. Like, he can get breakaways if you use him correctly, and he's good in shootouts, I think, too, right? Yeah. So he's a useful utility player. What was the other guy that we were? Martin. See, Matt Martin's really interesting. He He's tough. He can score a little bit. He really was a big part of that Sezikis line. So I think as long it, – it's a toss-up. You know, overall you like Martin because he's an unusual player. He's a tough player that doesn't get penalties, and he can contribute a little bit offensively, and he scares people. I go with you. I think I will take Matt Martin between those players. Um, yeah. I think that's the right choice. I'm going to finish with four more, and then we'll go move on after that. Um, Colin, I'm sorry, Colin Wilson, Marcus Grenland, mm -hmm. Valen. Uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, Justin Abdekader. Nope. And Vladimir, <laughs> and Vladimir Soboka. Uh, Soboka. Nope. Um, and those player, Michael, they have over two point five million dollars to four million dollars. I, I wouldn't take any of them. <laughs> What's the th what was the second one after? Um, uh, Marcus Grenland. Yeah, you know what? You could get Marcus Grenland for seven hundred grand. That's Mikhail's brother. You get them both, <laughs> and Marcus is a good fourth line energy guy. And he can score a little bit if you give him, put him in the right situation. And he's just like got a good motor. He doesn't stop. He's not as talented as his brother, but he's a good little speedster. You can get him for 700 Gs, then he's better than the other three. Yeah. Um, you know, I think something, like don't know what happened with him. Colin Wilson. Can't skate. Um, he had a, got a couple of good seasons um, with Nashville at yeah. some point. His, his wheels are not – like I, the NHL got faster and he was already average. Yeah. But, I, you know, I mean, I think that the four plus I mentioned to you, uh, the Grenland is only 27 years old. Yeah. Um, Justin and Vladimir, they're over 34, 35. I think you can get better player on the – For on sure. The, all the player we have on the list right For now. Sure. I don't see really um, – Sabaka can be useful, but he's been overpaid – Never met expectations. He can play center, play wing, but I just – every time you've given him opportunity, he can't deal with it. So the the Colin Wilson thing, like he, the other thing I was going to mention is 
I don't know personally the details of this, but he looks like he's too heavy. And maybe it's just yeah. the way he skates. Because he's he's a heavy skater. Maybe that's part of it. But he just looks like he's he needs to be faster. I mean, he's not quick on the puck. And I'm going to finish with three more because I just find those three. Um and then I would be surprised. I'm sure you're going to, I'm sure what you're going to get, but I want to talk about Trevor Lewis. Uh, he's maybe the oldest one of the three, but I want he's on the right, he's UFA. Then Frederic Gauthier. And then the last one, uh, Drake, Cag is it Cagliola? 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 Yeah. Cagliola is, Cagliola I don't get. Like he, he can score. He's small, fast. He can play third line role, and he can get you 12, 13 goals. So I kind of like him. Um, the guy that I was thinking of was nine someone, goal last season with. Um, and and look at his years before. Like he's pretty good offensively. He's one of those guys that came from the Union team that won with Shane Gostabear in the NCAA. Like I I kind of like him. Um, he's cheap. You could get him inexpensive, and he'll get you 12, 13 goals from the third line. And you can flex him up. He's shown he can. He's fast. Um, I think he's the best of those. What was he? What was the? Frederic Gauthier, Trevor Lewis. Oh, Trevor Lewis. The one that I thought you were going to say was Kyle Clifford. Which one? Kyle Clifford. You, so he, I would really think about Cliffy. If, if he was in that mix, because I think he, I don't know. Do you think he's, I think he's kind of better than Lewis at this point. Yeah. And they're probably the same money. I mean, they're, he got, you know, he's, he's not going to cost you much. He's tough and he can score a little bit. And um, now we're going to move on to the next one. Today we're going to talk about the New York calendars for sure. But prefer that I have a, it's, um, hold on. Hold on. I have something for you because oh. right now is going to be my friend, the. Oh my God. For you from NHL question how many players you can write on the Stanley Cup when you win the Stanley Cup how many people you can write on the Stanley Cup? names on your band yeah I thought it was 50 okay <laughs> but I don't know for sure <laughs> 55 55 okay yeah yeah but not school about the Tampa Bay where um they put 52 names over there and uh, one goalie uh, well wood or something like that the, the wedgewood? He, what wedgewood i don't know is the last night he's finished by wood if i remember he's the third four goalie for the yeah, yeah. so he's been to the bubble for toronto and yeah, um, yeah. and uh edmonton follow the team he's the only one his name is not on the center. Really? They didn't put it on. I think being in the bubble, you should get on the friggin' cup. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, they, you know, they talk about administration people, Michael Peterson and uh, Lee, Sylvia right. Kowalski, Ryan Belek, and right. then you talk about the equipment people, Jason Berger, and the mid school staff with Mike Poirier, Christian Rivas, and Brendan Roger. And then you talk about the... the Wedgwood doesn't get on the cup for that. <laughs> the coaching staff, right. um, part of that part that you have the the, um, the management like Matthew Dash, um, Stacy Rose, and then Jimmy wow. Pushore. Stacy Rose got on too. I'm sorry. We drafted his son, Austin. Yeah. So um, he's going to be a silver tip. Um, yeah, and you know what's interesting is um, we talked about New Jersey yesterday. Wedgwood re-signed with New Jersey yesterday. He was in Syracuse last year. That seems ridiculous to me. Um, he was a real good OHL goalie. I knew him. So I coached against him when he was 13 up. Like he, he was a 92. He was probably the best out of the 92 players. And the 92 players were like Tyler Toffoli, Johnny McFarland, Devontae smith um, Sagan, Skinner. Those were the 92s. He was the only goalie really that came out of that. J.P. Anderson got a little cup of tea, but. He was the best of them. Um, it, it's Scott Wedgwood. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So no, no Wedge. I know Wedgwood. <laughs> I, do want, I do want to let you know about that one. Over yeah, I'm bummed out, Scotty. That's <laughs> nice. Pretty, you know what I mean? Like, his, his dad in the summer, because we we do summer league, 
at uh, in Brampton at the Powerade Center, and I'd always talk to his dad. Thought I could con him into coming to my team, but <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Or be, you know, I mean, it's really um, interesting to see that I was not. I'll be honest with you, I did not know. It was, <laughs> I, I did not know it was fifty-five, honestly. Um, <laughs> and and then I'll be honest with you, I never thought they going they can put over the players and the management. I thought it was only the manager, the coach, and the uh, the players. It no. So uh, you put like rock strap guy and well, those are the trainers. So you so, can put the. I don't know. No, but, you know what I mean? How many funny. times is the name Devilano on the cup? I know, right? How many? Uh, so today we are going Seven. to talk about the New York Islanders. It's um, really a franchise turnaround. But I have a couple of questions to you at the end of your, um, on your um, presentation because I looked deeper this morning and there's some move I don't understand. I want to be sure um, we can get that. Yeah, and I don't know if I caught all of them, so I guess let's talk about it. But so, I mean, Islanders are maybe the best coach team in the NHL. I don't know if you disagree. I'm sure I agree with you. Uh, top three. Uh, it's funny you talk about this. I was thinking to create like a, an article or a video about the best coach, like the one to 31 example, right? Yeah. And I, 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 at some point, you know, when you think about it, oh my God, it's not easy. Why to put him Barry Trotz, you know, oh. what I mean, the top one versus to Claude Julien or Julien versus, you know. Um, but at the at the flip side, you have a, some players at the bottom where uh, they are really easy to find it there. So, um, yeah, they're, they're interesting. I mean, I think the one thing is, you know, there there's some decisions to be made on the cap situation. There's some players maybe you don't love in that scenario, but overall it's relatively well managed. We know the big thing is, first of all, they've done a great job with this team. They lost John Tavares and they've only gotten better. <laughs> like who would have predicted that? Um, turns out Barry Trotz is better than John Tavares. So that's a pretty good trade. <laughs> yeah. The, honestly, you're right. I think, it, you know, all the, how many people said, when are you going to lose John Tavares? This team's going to win. Not many. How, how, how many team? How many times did they make the playoffs with John Tavares? Never. You know, and then you look. Like he moves to Toronto, and they struggle in playoff situations. And you watch, and you see why. As great as he is, you know, there's just something missing there. But you know, th I think it's really tough to downplay. Like if if Barry Trotz had John Tavares, this team probably would have been that much better. I mean, Barzal is absolutely one of the most talented high-end players and they were tough on him like they didn't just give him the reins he got pulled back a little bit until he did what the coach wants so they you know they have a system there Lou's always had a very structured environment Barry Trotz is very similar obviously so I think that's a beautiful mix Barzal is absolutely the most talented player in this team which is a bit of a problem <laughs> because they don't really have anyone of that level to play with them um, coming in, they they see Grice sign in Detroit, which I think was fine. That was part of their plan. And the young star goaltender or presumed star Ilya Sorokin comes, and he'll be the backup or the the one B to um, Varlamov, who played very well. I mean, he's we a, a lot from him, right? The 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 words of the experts expect a good um, they expect a good play from uh, Sokolin. Oh man, he is. I mean, I don't know. His numbers are phenomenal everywhere he's played in the KHL. He's a little bit older. He's a big goalie. He's very technically sound, good rebound control. Now he's got to do the job, but it's not like you're thrusting an 18-year-old kid into this role. He's, no, no. He's, he's marinated, so I think you know what you're getting. You can project, like, is he – this is what's in my head. Is he Koskinen? Or is he Vasilevsky? Because he might be somewhere in between there, or he might, you know, be the low end, right? But he's good. He's a very good goalie. And then now we saw the move to move out Devin Taves, and it seems obvious when you look at the cap situation why they did that and what Taves signed for in Colorado. Um, and then when they – I can't remember. Did they pick one of those picks already? We have to look at it. Um, but, you know, I think we realize how good Taves is now. He was kind of an under-the-radar radar guy. But they, they feel pretty comfortable that Noah Dobson's going to step into that role, and I think he will as well. 
Noah Dobson's young, but he's very good. I mean, he plays a very mature game. He's a little bit bigger than Taves, and he does a lot of the same sort of stuff. The asterisk for me, you know, right now we've kind of got Martin Broussard on the sideline, and there's question marks around what they do with Komarov just because he's he's at three mil. But you've got to think he's still in the mix a little bit for the season unless they move him or something. But can Bellows or Wallstrom, so Kiefer Bellows or Oliver Wallstrom are very similar players. They have the ability to score. They're absolutely atrocious away the away from the puck. They've been trying to work with them away from the puck so that they're not like a black hole. So they, they it'll be interesting to see what happens with them. I have to think that they will make the jump, especially if there's no AHL season and that they might have some tough love moments with the coach. And you might see them get a Broussard, get a Martin back, because I think they want both of them. And, at, you know, inexpensive guys that can be relied upon five on five, kill some penalties and contribute a little bit offensively. And in the case of Martin and Komarov, they got some sandpaper. So, you know, they don't have, you know, you look at the upside, it's like Sorokin is a guy that you project at being able to be an excellent backup that maybe can become a number one in the next year or two. Dobson's a guy that can play top four minutes. They re-sign Ryan Pulak, which was a probably a very good move. He's a guy with a big shot, plays big minutes for them. He's a real good D. I don't know if he's a traditional number one. My feeling is he's more kind of like a two, but on this team, he's probably the best defense when they have. Um, I think in the playoffs, we saw what, maybe most people don't get to see, which is this team plays a very structured game. They have guys like Anders Lee and Brock Nelson that are maybe not, you know, flashy players, but they do a very consistent, effective job at what they do. Um, Anders Lee is very dangerous around the net. He's impossible to move. He's like a mountain man. And Brock Nelson's a big centerman who can get points for you in a bunch of different situations. Josh Bailey, you know, like this guy, we don't, we didn't really give him a lot of credit, but he's a very good playmaker. He can score a little bit and a lot of pucks go through him. I'm not a big fan of Everly, but he's going to be the guy that plays on Barzal's wings. He's the closest to being able to play at that level. And then you see like, you know, they lose a little bit with Devin Taves. You've got to project that Dobson will probably get 20 points that, to take, you know, some of the sting out of that. Um, Letty is what he is, right? He's a three, four exceptional skater, but the coach is always going to have to rein him in. Sezikis is like, gets, I don't think people understand why this guy's so effective. He can play in any situation. He's always on the puck. He's a great little centerman. He's just a gritty guy that people love. He can get you some goals. He's a 15 goal. The problem with him, I would say to you, is his injuries. This year, yeah, yeah, the, he because he had the injury in the playoffs and he was injured in the season, but he did not play any full year since like five. Years. Uh, that, that's a bit of a challenge, then he's not a big guy, right? Like, he plays like he's 6'2 and he's 5'10. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the upside, you know, they they gave Kiefer Bellows a little cup of coffee and he came in, and I thought he did pretty well, a couple goals. and. He was a plus, so that's that's what you want from him. So I think that they'll manage that, and he'll make the jump. Can you put the screen bigger? Uh, probably not that easy now. No. Okay. How about that? Better. Yeah. My buddy Piero Greco is there as the goalie coach. One of the better goalie coaches out there. Um, I'll, actually, Scott Wedgwood, funny enough, went to Piero Greco. <laughs> um. Andrew Ladd came back in the playoffs. He did not look at a place, but he obviously missed the whole year. So it'll be interesting to see because that's a big contract. And it, it, they're not showing him on the roster as far as um, in a, on a line. But you've got to think that, I don't know. I, I, he looked pretty good. Unless they can magically get rid of this 5.5, you probably got to figure out, like, can he play a regular shift again? He's had a rough time. Injury wise, he's not a beautiful skater, but you know, he's done. Is he gone? Did they buy him out? No, but my point to you, Lamb, uh, like he did not do anything since like 2016. Yeah, he's he's past his prime, and even in his prime, he was never a great skater, but he could get you points and he was a good, tough, strong player. So I, I don't know, does he get more than four games this year because he was hurt all year, right? 
Um, you've got to project. The other guy I don't really know much about is Simon Holmstrom. So I don't know if you know much about him. He was a high draft pick last year for them. They've had a weird thing. And they signed Austin Zarnick, which I thought was interesting because he can actually play a little bit. So, you know, he might be a guy that gets some, we're not really projecting, but might be able to flex into the lineup. Um, Bodie Wild is interesting. I don't think he's ready yet, but that could be a player. And then Sebastian Ajo, we know, can step in and pick up some kind of third pairing minutes. I don't know if he flexes up beyond that. So they're, they're an interesting lineup. They have very good balance. They're very structured, and they give everybody an opportunity. They obviously oh, yeah. have This is the best thing you never did since we do that. We can finally see the name of the players. Oh, because I zoom in? It was always, yeah, because before it was like too hard. Like right now you okay. can see perfect. Yeah, I should mention that. <laughs> um, I, I really like Pajot. I think he played very well in the playoffs for them. He's not, I don't think he's going to get the 25 or 27 goals that he had in Ottawa, but he'll be really good. And especially if they do flank him with the young guys, I can't see having both these guys on the same line. To me, that's really going to be mm, weird. Uh, Michael Del Cole was such a high draft pick, but he's carved out a role for himself. He's just not going to be the 20, 30 goal scorer we all thought. Um, I so, think for what you're missing there, I think you're missing Komarov. And yeah, I, Komarov and Broussard. And I think you're missing also... Um, and I think they'll re-sign Martin at some point. Yeah, but I think you're missing Johnson. He played a couple of games. True. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to – I mean, I don't know how many – they have depth, right? Like, they got guys like Johnson. They have – you know, Andrew Ladd will do something. I don't know what. They're not going to pay him five mil to sit around and do nothing. Um, I don't know what the deal with Thomas Hickey is. He didn't even play last year, did he? Is he hurt? He was hurt. He was on the long term or something. Yeah. Like I don't know what's going on. I don't know the situation there. But, I mean, I think he's kind of past playing in the NHL probably. Boychuk, you know, is getting expensive, but they don't have very long to ride that out. So you like that. What's that? Go back on your depth chart. Where here? Your depth chart, like yeah. So you you mentioned about the the forward. Um, let's finish with that part of there. Now you missing Komarov. Yep. Johnson and you yep. missing also Mar I think Matt Martin fit well, and you could also add Brassar there. No, I think you, I think they'll eventually sign Broussard, is my guess. So you know what I mean? Like the third line, I don't think so. Bellows and Wallstrom be there. Um, I'm I don't so well, I, you know, I don't think that they'll get a full season. I just don't see it. Um, I I I can't imagine it. But right now, these you know Komarov's under contract. The these two guys are not obviously, and Johnson's under contract. But you've got to see, like this guy's 21. Like, at what point do you bring him in? He They gave him a cup of coffee. He went through his apprenticeship. He's got to play. Just he, correct, Michael, between Bellows, and I'm sure you have a lot of fans uh, welcome. that listen to us about, you know, like myself, wh wh who do you believe between Wallstrom and Bellows have more potential or you think they are more ready? Or Um. It's really tough to say. I mean, they're very similar players. I think Wallstrom overall is probably better than Bellows. Bellows has got one skill. He can really score and shoot the puck. I don't know what kind of, like, I never thought he was a player that was in great shape. And frankly, I thought the same thing about Wallstrom. Wallstrom's skill level is probably a little higher than Bellows, and he's a little quicker. So I, I have to think. Them came about, from the USA a program. What's that? Both of them came to the U.S. Right. National Development Team. Yeah, exactly. And they, they are first round pick. One, yeah. one strong was the weight with, uh, remember, like Noah. Dominic Way higher, back, though. Back to back, right? Yeah. I, I think Wallstrom is probably better. Bellows might be a little bit ahead of him, but not much. Just in timing. I, I think they're very similar players with very similar upside and very similar risk. But I think overall... What does that translate to? I don't know. You know, like if you put a Wallstrom with Barzal, I think that's a better fit. I can't see Kiefer Bellows ever playing with Barzal. By the way, Bellows is a Brian son. Yeah. Yeah, that's his son. One of the best players in the show. He was a great player. Second overall draft pick or first? 
And he was there with Minnesota. Played for Montreal, but he was like, woof, he can score. He was a good player, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's not his dad. But, you know, um, let's see. I mean, he was a great offensive NHL player. So he was drafted what? I always I can't remember if he was first or second. Second overall. So you think about that. Like, that's – who was ahead of him? Was that the Lemieux draft? No, that was way before then. It was Cluzac. Oh, my God. He would have been so good, but, man. After following him, it was Gary Nillen. I Ron know. Isn't that crazy? And look down. There's better defensemen, though. Check that, check that list. You're going to be scary. It's crazy because how many of those defensemen's career were sh cut short by injuries? Gary Nillen, Ron Sutter, Scott Steven, number five, Phil Osley, number six. So I want to – let's see. There's the one on that list. So Andrew Chuck was in that draft. Dave Andrzejczyk, number 16. <laughs> Dave, uh, and Danico, Patrick Flatley was injured all the time. 17, 18, Cam, da, uh, Cam Danico. Danico yeah. um, you know, and then you talk about Pat Flatley. Yeah. Yeah, always injured, but a good player. He was uh, a very good player over there. So I think it was an interesting yeah. draft, but the best guy yeah. we were looking at, look at who was at um, – no, pick number 36 was Thomas Sandstrom. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was – Doug Gilmore was in that draft too. And he's in the seventh round. <laughs> but see, think about it. Gord, Gord Kluzak goes first, right? Bellows was absolutely a great player. But the guys that went later, Andrew Chuck, Housley, Verbeek, Scott Stevens. Gary Lehman. Can you imagine if he – yeah, Gary Lehman was in that. If you, can you imagine if you drafted Gary Nyland and you passed up Scott Stevens? Pat Verbeek, Kevin Dinan, Dave Reed. Dave Ellett. Yul Samuelson. Tony Granato. Dave Ellett. Bob Ruth. Rouse. My old buddy Mike Huff. Ray Ferraro. Bob Rouse was in there. Corey Miller. Everson. Yeah, what a, it was interesting. Gordy Kluzak could have been. Well, was he in that draft too? Round six. Round six. Wow. Followed by who? Tony Granato. That, that's what I was saying. Granato, like. Do you want a, a, a better one? Round number seven? What was seven? Doug Gilmore. That's what I said, the first one. He, he had the most points. He had 1,400 points. He was the highest scoring player in that whole draft and he was drafted in the se seventh round the second highest was andrew chuck with 1300 points and then housley was third at 12. <laughs> kelly miller it's not I know, yeah another good player right like one of the miller over 1000 game in nhl oh yeah he's a good player for a long time and it's funny was he was part of the trade to get bobby carpenter wasn't he i think so it was it was yeah it was Kelly Miller, Bob Crawford, and Mike Ridley for Bobby. I think had a lot of good good year with Rangers and Washington. Well, if I remember. Washington, Washington, yeah. Yeah, was he the captain in Washington? It was those year with Mike Garner, right? I, I'm not sure. I think you was. was more like, I don't I think, think so because Rob no, Ridley, Mike Gardner was gone at that point. I, I think it was more like Kevin Hatcher and um, Rod Langway. Was Dale Hunter was there and Peter Bondra was there. Pete Peters. Pete Peters was a goalie? No. Don, they, they kind of cycled through some goalies. Colzik? That... Colzik? No. Eventually. Yeah, Colzik eventually came in. Jim Carrey? So Langway was there. Dale Hunter. Dale Hunter was definitely there. I don't know about Langway. Maybe Montreal, early on. Langway in 1985 by Montreal. Yeah, but that was – Langway would have been gone by then, no? No. Yeah, I think he was done. Langway? Oh, no, he's still there. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, he still played. Wow. He played till the 90s. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. He was like the guy that would win the Norris Trophy, and you were like, what? <laughs> and a great Montreal screw. Briefly. Well, who was he traded for? 
Montreal? Yeah. They got for Washington, right? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> don't look it up. <laughs> no, I don't look. I look, I look on the hair right now. It's not Rick Green? No. Rick Green is not coming for Washington? No. Rutley. No, no, I'm sorry. Rick Green was probably part of that trade. He was part of that trade. Yeah. Yeah. So he was part of the trade. Way. So get so this is actually a crazy trade. It was Rod Langway, Brian Engblom, Doug Jarvis, Craig Laughlin for Green and Walter. Ryan, Ryan Walter. Ryan Walter. <laughs> so yeah. Langway, Langway was the he bring a lot for Washington. Oh, he was he was a Norris Trophy winner. But the reason why Montreal won the Stanley Cup in 1986, yeah, because Ryan Walter was a part of that part. Maybe, yeah. And that because that year Patrick Roy came in. That's why they won the Cup. Then <laughs> maybe that. And we are far away from Islanders right now. Let's go back. Yeah. So all right. So if we do the math a little bit, you've got to project them. Probably, you know. 200 this might drop i think this probably drops i think they get closer to <clears throat> believe it or not 180 to 200 goals what i don't know is sorokin like i'm being conservative i think if you look at last year's numbers realistically let's take a look back i mean yeah it's probably about right i mean go they were 183 goals against last year no uh, it was only in 76 yeah. games so they're probably like under they're probably closer to 200 goals against but you know we'll be we'll be conservative because we've got a new goalie here goals for they have very good depth i think that they're going to be fine and you know some guys will pick these goals up because they traditionally get decent production from the third and fourth lines and they'll get consistent production from the top two i think you've got to say a they're a playoff team probably the top third of the league you got to give seven or eight points just to having trots alone. So I think they're kind of a 95 to hundred point team is my guess. Last year they were what? 35 and 23. I think that sounds right. Yeah. 35 and 23 and then 10 ties. The 10 ties to me say that's coaching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So last year they were what? 80 points in 76 games. So I think they're kind of the 90, 95 point range. That's probably what I would project them as. I don't see any big breakthroughs from any players. You know, I think until I think you get a really high end. 20, 38 goal with the third line, I think it's not realistic for that with those players. But it depends. If you bring like Brasal, Komarov, or uh, Johnson, you can maybe get about 30. 25 to 30 there. I, uh, I think you're going to get somewhere between 30 and 40 for the fourth, third line for this team. Four line, I think 20 goal would be would be good. Um, on the on the Islanders defensively, I think they going to miss um, Taves. The, yeah, I really believe they're going to miss him because he was really where uh, Bolchak and uh, I don't you know what I mean like Bolchak. Bolchak's um, risky. So I'm not sure what happened with him, but still, uh, they have the good four line, uh, top four. I think uh, maybe Mayfield was we dropped a little bit, or Lady we dropped a little bit, but um, overall, with I think the ideally first, you, you're right. I think ideally, I don't know if I love. I think Dobson Fleck moves up. Boychuk, we don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, he's healthy. Letty, ideally at this point, you got to probably play him top four, but. Let me finish my uh, fix my life because I know it's like it's a school I've been. So overall, I mean, I think we're gonna see what it'll be a good season for them. Like they'll be very competitive. the The upside is if either Bellows or Wallstrom can actually pop through and become what they should be, which is twenty to thirty goal scorers. But I'm not convinced they will. I don't see that happening on this team, and I think that they're gonna. Take time. Hey, hey, honestly, at the end of the day, it asks what happening with them. First of all, they have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pick next year, but they still have only four million dollars on their 
salary cap, right? And yeah, the they, have them out, they have to pay Barzell. And I really believe Barzell should get about seven point five to eight million dollars. I totally agree with that number. Because you're so, paying Anders Lee seven and Nelson six. I gotta think he's getting seven and a half, eight. Yeah. So I think he wants twelve. But I don't see that happening. He no, might. No. He's he going might to be about eight million dollars there. Uh, Lee is seven million dollars. He's a RFA. He's only twenty three. He's going to get a bridge there. That's I mean, right. he get eight million dollars for three years. Yep. And then after that, he can move on to the next one. But my yeah. point to do that, salary clear out. Mm. The point to do that, they would have to let it go, Komarov, Lad, or, or to figure out what happened with Andrew Land or. Um, Johnny Bol Bolchak. Bolchak is a big rock, you know. But that's so, going to expire. Th this one is weird. Like, pajot has got a lot of years left. One, really? two, three, four, five, six years for Pajot at $5 million. Yeah, because Ottawa just signed him last year. Wow. So they, they need more than him to be – they need him to be more than a third-line player. He's it, really expensive, a third-line player. But, but he's a little bit like what Philip Danu does for Montreal – but the problem he get is like Islanders have already um, already um, Barzell in front of him, and then you have a Nelson Nelson. Now during the playoff, I really love uh, Brooke Nelson. He's six million dollars. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. So they have a lot of they have a good contract. The only thing is going to happening there. It's the 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 second part of the lineup, right? So Endersley Nelson. Barzal, they deserve that kind of money, right? But the problem they get after that is that maybe, maybe um, Pajot is a bit too high. This way he's supposed. Oh, Everly's too high. Look, he's thirty years old. He's got four years left at five five. So then we have to go there with Land at two more. You have still three more years to go. Yeah. Come around at three million dollars. Yeah, it's a little bit too high on that one. Yeah. We have a good deal with Bouvillier at 2.1, but next oh year God, yeah. the RFA is going to be a uh, trouble. And yeah. then, the, believe, look, in two years, not not this year, and three years, honestly, they have the top four player UFA, but EK is out. Boy shall be out. They're going they got to some problems, Pierre. I mean, look at this. So you got a 30 year old Anders Lee. One, two, three, four, five, six years left. At seven million, if he stops scoring goals, you got a problem. Now, I think his game is not dependent upon speed or skating, so it shouldn't deteriorate too much. But you don't know. He scores so far. He, he deserves he scores, that, right? Like he got twenty goals. <laughs> That's a risk, right? Nelson, he's twenty nine now. But again, he's on his spring, so he's good contract at six million dollars. As long as he keeps, you know, yeah, but, you know productive. Like, productive, yeah. Beverly, like, did he even get 20 goals? How many goals do you have, like, 18? Eight, eight, because 25, 26 goals last year from uh, Brooke Nelson. Yeah. yeah that was, if he stays at this, you're very happy. No. Uh, Iberle, he did not reach 20 goals, but he will reach it because he plays 16 goals. He has 16 goals in 60, and then he yeah. scored 19 in 78. He's an average 20 goals. Right yep. there. Uh, the only yeah. thing, the only thing, he helping he play with Barzal. He's the only player, like skill wise, his hands are very, you know, very good, and he's the only player that's close to being able to play with Barzal. But you know, they what would really help this team is get rid of some of that salary, and you need a high end talent on that line because, man, if Barzal had. Um, A sniper, right? Like if he, if they had drafted, I don't know. Like let's say, if, if a guy like Alexander Holtz had dropped them, that's the type of guy you need that can just really fire the puck. <laughs> now that might be Wallstrom, right? Wallstrom and Bellow, Bellows can really shoot the puck, but what's the difference between that and Eberle? I mean, they're one trick players, right? So it would be nice if he had a really high end player. You'd be excited. <laughs> yeah, the problem is because they have to pay. Well, off they have to pay Barzell for eight million dollars. So whatever you trade there, but imagine if they take up Bolchak six million, 
come around three million July. and then land for five is 14 million dollars take the 14 million dollars turn around and go get Hoffman and you sign Basel are you a better team I mean, probably. I don't know. Boychuk, I like Boychuk, but he's old now, and I know a I, lot of miles on him. Like, and he's, done. you know, and I, I think Andrew Ladd. I just don't. I think that's dead money. So I feel like if you could figure out how to get rid of Ladd and figure out how to, you might have to give up draft pick, right? Yeah. Do you want to do that? I don't. I don't know because they've done a really poor job of keeping draft picks i think if you look so at that my last we, we have two three minutes before it's over that's yeah. a big subject i was telling you look look 2020 they have nobody before the third round pick and they got four, five players only the number 19 um someone have to sell you know it's not i just see nothing with yeah, and Armstrong. we don't know yet what could happen over there they well, this is like years. last year two years ago it was pretty good for them right yeah, Wallstrom, Dobson, and Wild. Like, yeah, that that's a right. Then the following year after that, seventeen, we don't get anything from no. that part so far. But again, they don't have first round pick over there, Michael. No. All right. Now it's they get pick, you know, sixteen. They got Bellows is the really one. They get a really great year, fifteen with Barzell and Bouvillier. They hit their. Yeah. Arc. This is a home run over there. Sure, yeah, but that so, was um, that was that was Garth Snow. 14, I don't know. I agree with the Michael Dalco. It's too bad. Like, I really liked him. He was pretty clutch, and we knew he was a little choppy skater, but man, he's not turned out. He just, he's but, he is who he is. He's carved out a role, but he's not like a first line player. I mean, he yeah, but he got great to get Devon at 108 on that draft. Pick it was good. First thing, they have a good one over there. This crew with Griffin, Reynard, and, and 12. <laughs> <laughs> but, he traded that to get Barzal. That's a great deal. They get Beauvillier too. <laughs> yeah, but again, you know, I mean, they, but they get well to get Adam Pillage, uh, Pillage, and the I like that. Over there, they yeah. have an amazing turnaround. And all of that is Garth Snow. You know what? This is surprised me. I did not know that they would they draft Nino Nader Raider. Yeah. No, because he was a pain in the neck there, and then they moved him to Minnesota for nothing. I well, didn't not did did know, know that. Buck, right? I but did not know that. significantly older. So he wow. was a pain in the neck. I'm telling you, Pierre, he's a pain in the neck in New York. They want nothing to do with him after a while. Them to Minnesota, same nonsense. And now he's in Carolina, and they're burying him too. They did well the uh, early 10, 2010 draft. But the last four years, they struggle a lot. Yeah, those those are the bars. Like, because that's when Garth Snow actually did an okay job for what he had. You know, he loaded up on prospects and tried to give them a chance. He the the Griffith Reinhardt trade is the greatest steal ever. Like but, the <laughs> but we always, always, always remember the Islanders with Rick Dipietro. Yeah, true. Um, and so a fun fact that, you know, that Jimmy Devolano had three cups with the Islanders. And then that, who is the second one? They did very bad contract after that. I don't know what you're talking about. When? So they did bad with DPA. Uh, oh, in the action. What? Cash in the action. <laughs> Terrible. Alexi Ashen. Oh my God. That was the Mike oh, Miller. Yeah. Hey, Michael, we talk about sometimes GMs, like, because they make one or two, three bad decisions, it can affect the organization for years. For sure, yeah. And that's happened there. I really did struggle for years because the Tipietro, uh, because this is a first overall pick, right? And then the the, the UFA, I believe it was a UFA with uh, Alexei Yashin from uh, oh, Ottawa. No, they traded... Spezza and Chara. True. <laughs> here's Chara. Here's Spezza. Give us Yashin. They signed a silly contract for a guy that was so soft and not team oriented. Wow. And that's so that was what was painful about that. I mean, that's terrible. Yeah. And the, the Di Pietro one was a, a cluster too because they had Roberto Luongo. He had just probably got to 40 or 50 games in his career. He was just getting ready, right? They trade Luongo, 
Vancouver, right? For Trevor Linden. And they traded somebody else with them. I can't remember who it was, but I can't remember if Kavasha was in that deal. And then what they got was so they could take Di Pietro first. And they could have taken Danny Heatley or Marion Gaborik. <laughs> wow. Is it the time was the, the Chinese guy was the owners? Um, it was only like twenty team and then it, and the U trial and the minor. I, I don't know. They went through some real tumultuous things. The wonk, wonk, wink, wonk. Well, Charles, Charles Wong, he he Charles Wong still owned the team up until two years ago, and I don't think that was Mike Milbury's time. And there was some really crazy ownership stuff going on in with the Islanders. And it, I think it was before Wong. And I think Charles Wong, you know, had he was okay. But in the end, there was just a tough situation with the arena and Long Island. And it was just a yeah, that's another one. They switched the arena. Now they are back and everything like that. So this struggle, uh, it's good to have Lou over there. It's good to have Perry Trust over there. Yeah. Hopefully they can go for next. But again, you mentioned at a couple of minutes ago, this year and next year. And then after that, watch out because that's going to struggle. They have a lot of UF training. They have to figure out something there. Yeah. Yep. They got to start pulling in young guys and buying out old guys. Yeah. Great, great stuff again today. Tomorrow we're going to get one of the best teams in the NHL in the next two, three years. Not this year, but the one is really on the, my belief, this team is maybe the best three team in the future. Um, tomorrow, New York Rangers, excited about that organization to see what they're going to do. But uh, another great day, Michael, to bring the Islanders preview 2020, 2021. And hopefully, we're going to start in January 1st because right now we are on the slum of news. We don't know what's going on around the league because it's boring. Nothing happened right there. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. And you know what? The, the sad thing about this, nothing happened there, but also nothing happened to the NHL. And, you know what I mean? It's everywhere right now. So. Yeah, we're, everybody's in flux. I mean, the pol yeah. political situation is bad for us, you know? Yeah. By the way, I just want to mention this. You have a chance to watch an amazing... Spornet article about Owe Maker. It's oh yeah, Howie Maker. I love Howie Maker. It's amazing to watch. Go there on the Sportnet, Marco. It's really great. I can't get it because I'm in. How do you get it? I go on the website Sportnet point C. It, it blocks me. They block you on, on yeah. videos, but not on the article. Oh, it's an article. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. me. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to the Hockey Nation live show. And of course, and follow us on Facebook page and of course on YouTube channel. Look forward to see you tomorrow, 11 o'clock Eastern time. Have an amazing, great Thursday, everybody. Thanks, Michael, for everybody, for everything, every day on the 31 days marathon and 31 different things. See you tomorrow.